Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports on News. I'm Jeff Working. This is going to be a preview of the next edition of the Pond Key Take as we look at the Walleye versus the Utah Grizzlies. This is going to be a mighty interesting series as in the first round, both teams in the Walleye and Grizzlies got pushed to the brink by their opponent as the Walleye were able to beat the Cyclones um, <clears throat> in seven games and then the Grizzlies were able to beat the Tulsa Oilers in seven games. Now, the difference in the second round was the Wheeling Nailers had a very solid first round to then face the juggernaut walleye and have that turn out to be the case. They were literally the juggernauts against an opponent that's still coming up to be one of their best players, of course, and a couple of them are rookies, where the walleye have much more experience as well as in net with one of the best in cage in Billy Christopoulos. So they took down very easily the Wheeling Nailers in a sweep where the Grizzlies had more to fight for in the first round in one sense because they did go up 3-0 against Rapid City. So it looked like they were cruising and they were potentially going to have the same boat as the Walleye. Well, no, because Rapid City found what the Nailers were not able to find, which was some fight in them to be able to win two very good games back-to-back, -back, one in a goal-scoring onslaught game, 6-5, to five, and then they were able to shut them out 3-0 to nil to be able to win that next game. But then Utah really came out in roads and railed on them 5-1 to one in the last game and were able to close it out. So they did start looking like they were kind of starting to screw themselves over the Grizzlies, but they were able to close it out in the end. And because of that actually having to delay a bit, they actually have not the fresher legs, but the more in-game speed legs because they only played on the 16th compared to tonight, which is the 20th, where when you look at the Toledo Walleye, they haven't played since the 12th. So they're going to have eight full days off. Practice mode is obviously nothing close to game mode. Every hockey fan and analyst and person that covers the game uh, knows that. Fortunately, I have the privilege of being able to do all of that. But, um, like, they... They they are not going to potentially be the team that comes out with the more hockey legs early. And I think that's how in Game 1, because the, the best case for the Utah Grizzlies to win this series is really coming out, getting a big win in Game 1, and kind of just throwing the walleye off of their heels, because obviously they just came from a series, all things considered. No series is easy. They still had to beat the wheel and nailers, but they came off of a hard fart uh, first series against the Cyclones to then wipe the floor with the Nailers in a series sweep, show them some adversity in this, and then they have to fight back from that. Now, they will, because the the Walleye have an absolutely um, stacked roster that's playing really well. I would be shocked if they didn't fight back from that adversity. Hawkins, Hensick, and Albert are playing absolutely ridiculous. Barry and Curry are also playing those rhyme, but <laughs> they're also playing uh, very well. Uh, Gazzola, Clark, and then Meyer, every, they have a very good defensive defense. And then again, you got one of the best in cage in Billy Christopoulos. So I would have to lean towards the walleye in this game. I mean, they're just stacked. The way that Hawkins, Hensick, Albert, Burry, Curry, uh, even Hurd as depth guys, McKenzie, Boeing, Dickinson as depth guys, the walleye have the depth-ridden roster, the best in the ECHL as far as I'm concerned. They were the first in the league. The Reading Royals, who unfortunately eliminated my team, were the second in the league. The Walleye are now going to face a team that I think this series is going to be the toughest series they played uh, for the Toledo Walleye. I don't see this being a series that they're able to come in. <clears throat> I see it being more like the Cyclone series for them, but even tougher because obviously the Utah Grizzlies have a lot of depth on their roster as well, where the Cincinnati Cyclones are, little, are a more of a top-heavy roster. But when it comes to the Grizzlies in cage, they also have a net miner that's been insanely sharp in Trent Miner. So it's good to be a fun goaltending series to watch in this one as well between Billy Christopoulos and Trent Miner. Miner, less experienced in the league, but is developing himself in only 28 career games into one of the better, sharper-looking goaltenders, just kind of like Logan Flodell was for my Reading Royals. And it's nice to see that. And then you have Peyton Jones, the former Penn State product. So 
Fan-wise, I'm almost kind of rooting for the Grizzlies because they got the former Penn State netminder there. And then they also have Doust, who's obviously a Deu, who's also very good from the back end. Defensive of the year, Luke Martin, who's solid on both ends. McDonald, so they got some decent. Uh, Crossley, who's good on the defensive zone. So they got guys to shut down the walleye. The problem is their team, it has some depth with um, Zach T- Zekos, um uh, Fins, Henry, Manic, and Penner, but it's not the depth of the walleye where they're going to really need to rely on Pfizer, Betts, who are also rookies. They've had good postseasons. Bradley and Tardiff, who have more experience. And then Zach Zekos, who, um, who is also a rookie. So the, a lot of their best performers, three of them, have just came into the league at the end of the season in Pfizer, Betts, and Zekos. So that concerns me a bit for the Grizzlies going up against such a juggernaut of the walleye. So that is another reason why I picked the walleye. But I do think this series has a chance to go six. The games is a crapshoot, so I'm just going to really pick the walleye. But I would say I have a feeling this series is not going to be a quick four or five gamer. It's going to go deep. And part of that could also be even if the Grizzlies have an off defensive game because of how great the push pace of the walleye is, while well, they have one of the better netminders himself, that seems to be performing at the top of his game. In Trent, <clears throat> in Trent Miner, so that really wouldn't uh, worry me at all. And Kevin Bruder, I don't think, should really be worried at all about that. But again, I'm taking the Toledo Walleye, and I would say it's going to go at least six. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the recent edition of the Ponky Take as we preview the Toledo Walleye against the Utah Grizzlies, which is actually, realistically, probably the best series of the ECHL Kelly Cup play, which is saying something how great the series have been this far, but this series has a chance to be a very good battle. It's just going to depend how the youngsters of the Grizzlies with less overall experience continue to show up in this postseason when it comes to their forward court. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.